I want to start with reopening the country. I know this is your first trip back out into the country yes. in, in quite some time. And you've said that the decision to open the economy is the biggest decision I've ever had to make. How do you, and, and I suppose this is the central question, how do you save livelihoods without risking more lives? Well, I think actually the decision to close the country was the biggest decision I've ever had to make. And I've said that very loud and clear. I mean, we had the greatest economy in history, in the history of the world, not only our economy, it was our greatest economy. Uh, best employment numbers, best numbers in every single way. And they said, sir, we have to close the country. I said, what are you talking about, close the country? Because nobody's ever heard of such a thing. And we saved millions of lives by doing it. And by putting the ban on China very early was a big thing. But the biggest decision I've ever had to make is closing the country. And certainly this is now also a big decision, but the people want to go back to work. I want to ask you about what Dr. Fauci said last night about the reopening of the country. He said it's the balance of something that's a very difficult choice. How many deaths and how much suffering are you willing to accept to get back where you want to be? Do you see it that way? Do you believe that's the reality we're facing, that, that lives will be lost to reopen the country? It's possible there will be some because you won't be locked into an apartment or a, or a house or whatever it is. But at the same time, we're going to practice social distancing. We're going to be washing hands. We're going to be doing a lot of the things that we've learned to do over the last period of time. And we have to get our country back. You know, people are dying the other way, too. When you look at what's happened with drugs, it goes up. When you look at suicides, I mean, take a look at what's going on. People are losing their jobs. We have to bring it back, and that's what we're doing. Let me ask you about testing Yeah. right now in America. You know, early on, there were hurdles. Dr. Fauci at the time acknowledged it was a failing. But for Americans who do want to go back to work, should they be able to have access to a test now? Should yeah. they know whether they've been exposed to the virus? Should yeah. they know if somebody's at the workplace asymptomatic? Sure. and they simply don't know or, or do they have to go back to work having faith in their leaders and you mr president that the workplace will be safe yeah. no they don't they have to uh test if they want you know some people are strong believers in testing so right now for any american worker who's nervous about going back if they want to get tested to see if they've been exposed to the virus uh, they can have access to both they the antibody should have tests no problem and they the should have no problem and as good as this is we're even getting better we came up don't forget the cupboard was bare the other administration, the last administration, left us nothing. We didn't have ventilators. We didn't have medical equipment. We didn't have testing. The tests were broken. You saw that. We had broken tests. They left us nothing. And we've taken it and we have built an incredible stockpile, a, a stockpile like we've never had before. Many people have heard you say that along the way and have wondered, though, you know, you're three years into your first term. Yeah. You're now applying for the job again. What did you do when you became president? to restock those cupboards that you say were bare? Well, I'll be honest, uh, I have a lot of things going on. Uh, we had a lot of uh, people that refused to allow the country to be successful. Uh, they wasted a lot of time on Russia, Russia, Russia. That turned out to be a total hoax. Then they did Ukraine, Ukraine, and that was a total hoax. Then they impeached the president of the United States for absolutely no reason. And we even had a 197 to nothing vote by the Republicans. Let me ask you about something Governor Cuomo said today. And, and this, is, this is really the debate, I think, for a lot of Americans who really do want to go back to work, sure. but who are afraid for their own health. And Governor Cuomo said the question comes down to how much a human life is worth. That you monitor the transmission rate, the hospitalization rate, the death rate. If it goes up, you stop, you turn off the valve. You slow things down. Do you agree with him that that is the way a lot of these governors who are reopening should proceed? No, I don't know. I'd have to see his full statement. Look, we've gotten along very well. Don't forget, Governor Cuomo last week said the president and the federal government had do have done a phenomenal job. He said that. Yeah, a he's saying now job. that you just have to be ready to turn the valve off for a well, time if I, you I see a spike. Tell you, David, I can only tell you what he said last week. Our country has to go back to being our country again. You have people that are not going to stand for this, and I understand them very well. And we are going to put out little embers and little fires and maybe some big fires, but we still have to go back to work. You talk about the embers and, and, and the possible big fires. There were two new studies out in the last 24 hours. I, I know that the White House has shot down a couple of them saying they weren't vetted through your task force. One was from Johns Hopkins that said the death rate could 
double if we're not careful with this reopening of America by, by June, the daily death rate. Uh, the University of Washington saying we could have 135,000 Americans dead by August. What do you make of those numbers, Mr. President? Uh, a couple of things. First of all, these models have been so wrong from day one, both on the low side and the upside. They've been so wrong. They've been so out of whack. And they keep making new models, new models, and they're wrong. Those models that you're mentioning are talking about without mitigation. Well, we're mitigating, and we've learned to mitigate, but we can be in place, work in place, and also mitigate. We've done it right, but now we have to get back to work. We have to do it. But let me ask you, because you've responded to those two new studies out with these forecasts, your own numbers have shifted over they time. Have. They you have. You said 60,000 Americans could die. That's what you said last week. I watched your town hall right. over the weekend. You said 75, 80 to 100,000 people could die. Which models are you looking at? And, and what should yeah. Americans be prepared for as we reopen the country and head into the fall where we could see it, a potential second wave? Well, the upper number was, as you know, 2.2 million people. And then there are some, some models or charts that showed higher than that, but 2.2 million people. I always felt 60, 65, 70, as, as horrible as that is. I mean, you're talking about filling up Yankee Stadium with death. So I thought it was horrible. but it's probably going to be somewhat higher than that. There'll be more death, but the virus will pass with or without a vaccine. And I think we're doing very well in vaccines, but with or without a vaccine, it's going to pass and we're going to be back to normal. But it's been a rough process, there's no question about it. Are you still convinced we'll have a vaccine by year's end and 300 million doses, which you had spoken yeah. of? You can never be convinced when you say, am I convinced? I can say this, we're doing really great, Oxford, Johnson & Johnson, these companies, and I get reports every single day. They're doing really great. Am I convinced? I can't be convinced of anything. But I think that we have a really good shot of having something very, very substantial. Let me ask you about the tremendous hurt in this country. There are 30 million Americans who are unemployed. You don't need me to tell you that. We're expecting the new unemployment rate this week. There have been forecasts, 15, 16, 17 percent. One of your advisors projected an unemployment rate of 19 percent. That's nearly one in five Americans without a job. How bad is this going to get? Well, that is what it is. Uh, and, you know, it's very interesting. Even the Democrats aren't blaming me for that. We had to close it up and we saved millions of lives and we did the right thing. Now we're getting back to work. Uh, the third quarter, I think, is going to be, I call it a transition quarter. A lot of people, you see it. I tell you what, I got on the plane today. There was such spirit. People are starting to feel. We land in Arizona. I leave from D.C. I get calls from everybody all over the country. I just spoke to the governor of Florida. Florida is really active. I think a lot of people share that hope, Mr. President. But the reality for so many of the families that we've reported on is they can't afford to wait for the next quarter. They're just trying to get through next week or the next dinner they put on the right. table. Well, we've done a lot for that. Uh, we've done our small business, as you know, our PPP, uh, paycheck, if you want to call it that, uh, where small businesses are given billions of dollars so that they can take care of their employees. We've done a lot of other. Look, we, we've done $2 trillion, and it's actually close to three if you really add it up, but $2 trillion has been approved, and we'll probably do more. It's a stimulus. It's to keep people employed, to keep small businesses open. Let me ask you, because people will look back, and we have an election six months from now. They're going to look back to the beginning of this, and they're going to wonder what you knew and when you knew it. And, and I have no interest in going back over everything you said. But there was one thing you said that perhaps you could clarify. You said this, this was at the end of February. Uh, a full month had gone by. You'd stopped travel from China. And you said of the cases here in the U.S., when you have 15 people and when the 15 within a couple of days is going to go down to zero, that's a pretty good job we've done. Help me understand that moment. Did you really think we were going to have 15 cases in the U.S.? And so let, let me, let me, I said even, I, you would say worse than that. I said one person one time. And it's true. There was a time when we had one person in this country. We knew about it. We worked on it. But we had one person. It mushroomed. The 15 people mushroomed. Other people were coming in also from Europe. Don't forget. But we're at more than a million but cases But don't forget, now. in January, okay, let's talk about cases. You know why you're at a million cases? Because we have more testing than anybody else. If we tested as much as these countries down here, 
okay, who don't do very much testing at all. Look at Japan, very little testing. They're at the bottom of the rung. Uh, look at South Korea, it gets so much publicity. The president of South Korea is a friend of mine. President Moon, he called up, he said, what you're doing with testing is amazing. If I tested this number of people instead of this number of people, I'd have far fewer. If I see this line goes all the way up over 7 million tests. If I tested down here at 1 million tests, I would have a lot fewer cases, too. I understand the argument no, you're no, making. But, but, but look, at, look but, at your question. No, but you understand there's a huge disparity between 15 and more than a million cases. The, what Was it an intelligence failure? Where was the no, breakdown that I, we didn't know the scope so. of this? Look, l let, me, let me tell you this. Um, I closed the border, if you want to use that term. I banned people from coming into China. There were approximately 40,000 Americans. If you were in my position, you, you would let them come in. You could ask Ron DeSantis, great governor of Florida. Those people went through quarantine, they went through tests, they went through everything, but they were American citizens. I had to let them come back in. But I came in, and what I did is I said against many people, including Anthony Fauci, who I like very much, including Deborah, who I like very much, the doctors, and many other people. They said, don't ban China, it's, not, it's gonna blow over. And they said this at the end of February. Now, at the same time, I wanna be optimistic. I don't wanna be Mr. Gloom and Doom. It's a very bad subject. I'm not looking to tell the American people when nobody really knows what's happening yet, oh, this is gonna be so tragic. I wanna be, aside from everything else, and I'm gonna use a term, and some people love it, and some people hate it, but I love it. I want to be a cheerleader for us. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you one more question about the nearly 70,000 Americans whose lives have been lost. Grandparents, mothers, fathers, sons, daughters. Right. We've lost more people now than we lost in the Vietnam War. What do you want to say to those families tonight? I want to say I love you. I want to say that we're doing everything we can uh, I also want to say that uh, we're trying to protect people over 60 years old. We're trying so hard. And I want to just say to the people that have lost family and have lost love and the people that have just suffered so badly and just made it and just made it, that we love you. We're with you. We're working with you. We're supplying vast amounts of money like never before. We want that money to get to the people and we want them to get better. And we want them. You can never really come close to replacing when you've lost some, no matter how well we do next year, I think our economy is going to be raging. It's going to be so good. No matter how well those people can never, ever replace somebody they love, but we're going to have something that they're going to be very proud of. And to the people that have lost someone, there is nobody, I don't sleep at nights thinking about it. There is nobody that's taken it harder than me. But at the same time, I have to get this enemy defeated. And that's what we're doing, David. That's what we're doing. And if November becomes a referendum on your handling of the pandemic, are you comfortable with that? Well, I am and I'm not. Uh, you know, it's a very uh, it's a very interesting thought. You know, I, I built the greatest economy and then it was turned off for good reason. We saved millions of lives by doing it. I think people are going to remember that. I think they're going to remember that I rebuilt the military. I think they're going to remember that I gave them the biggest tax cuts in history. I gave them the greatest regulation cuts by far in history. I've given them the best job numbers in history. I've, I've rebuilt our military to a level it's never been uh, built. I mean, look, I got for the veterans, I got choice. They've been trying to get choice for 50 years, meaning a veteran is sick and can't get to a doctor. You go outside and we pay the bill. Nobody's ever done these things. And I've saved their Second Amendment. You wouldn't have a Second Amendment right now if it wasn't for me. And one other thing, I've always heard judges are the most important thing that a president can do. I set a record on judges. 252 judges, it's unthinkable. Every judge is the, so important. 252 judges, two Supreme Court justices. Nobody's ever done things like this. So I hope it's not solely on what I've done here because this is a very, this is like rubber. It's very, very amorphous. But you know what? I think in a certain way, and I hope I can say this to you in a couple of months, I think in a certain way, maybe our best work has been on what we've done with COVID-19. But, but we haven't gotten, we haven't been treated properly. 
not me, the Army Corps of Engineers, FEMA, the medical people, uh, the police, the, the nurses, everybody, even the doctors, they haven't been treated properly. The job they've done is a miracle. We're low on morbidity, we're number one on testing, we're number one again on ventilators and everything. Not number one, we're number one and there's no number two through ten. We're way ahead of every other country in the world. And very important, so important, I think we're doing very well in vaccines and we're doing very well therapeutically. I think we're going to have some great answers and hopefully by the next time we meet, we'll have some of those answers.